to St. Paul's Cathedral in Kamloops on this beautiful but mucky Sunday morning. I'd like to say uh, a welcome to, any, uh, to all of our regular parishioners and to anyone who is here visiting. We extend to you a very warm welcome and we welcome those who are joining us online. Our service this morning originates on the traditional and unceded territory of the Tacomopstatius Wetmuk people, Kamloops and Area First Nation. We acknowledge their careful stewardship of the land and the water prior to the arrival of Europeans. Um, our worship follows uh, the order on page 185 in your Green Book of Alternative Services, and the hymns are found in the Blue Book um, at, or in the More Voices Coiled book. Um, we have some announcements this morning. I'm new at this, so y'all can just give me a break. Um, I'd like to announce that, that, not to forget, that the annual vestry meeting takes place right after the 10 o'clock service on Sunday, February 5th in the hall. Now, as, a, as an adjunct to that, um, there will be a potluck lunch served. So if you are planning on attending and are able to bring something to share, that would be greatly appreciated. Finger foods only, please. And we need approximately four volunteers to help put out the food and clean up. And if you can help, please speak to Miriam Baskin after the service. And good luck with Sunday school this morning to the Baskins. Um, please know that um, if you'd care to join us for coffee and fellowship in the parish hall after the service this morning, we would love to see you. Um, if you need to get to the hall, you can either go through this archway here to my left, or you can go outside and turn to your right and find the blue door that says Territory of the People and go in that way. Um, let me see. Uh, I'd also like to remind everyone that tomorrow there will be a funeral held for Jennifer Allie Brighton at uh, 2 p.m. Her husband, Jim, extends a very warm welcome to anyone from St. Paul's who can attend in person or via Facebook. Um, the flowers on the altar this morning are given with thanks to God for the life of loving husband, George Wilmot, given by his loving wife, Linda Jackson. And also, just a heads up, the thrift shop has a new poster, and it's been put on the St. Paul's Facebook page. Um, it would be appreciated by the ladies who work diligently at the, at the thrift shop. If you would, if you see it, would you please comment and also share it with anyone you feel might be interested to know that our thrift shop is up and running again, and they would be very grateful for that. If you need any information or questions, um, please see Elaine Parks after the service. Thank you.
Good morning, and uh, welcome again. And uh, I'm here with you this morning in this place because Kyle was asked by the bishop to be uh, over across the river this morning um, at St. George's for their annual meeting. So that's where Kyle is this morning. I'd like to invite the children, if there are any children present, to come forward. Good morning. <laughs> and we have Miriam and Barry who are going to be with you this morning. So we'll begin with our prayer, which is in the leaflet, and you all have your responses. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for our children gathered with us here in this space and for those at home with their families. We pray for our children that they will come to know you and grow in their faith. We pray for their parents that in the busyness of life they will see you as they guide and nourish their children. We pray for ourselves that we might find ways to support, connect with, and pray for these families. May these children engage with you in adventures, dwell on your goodness, find you in the moments of difficulty, and recognize your presence through all of their days. Bless, Bless their time together this morning as they learn, pray, and play. Amen. Miriam. <laughs> but Barry and I are here today because we have a little bit of a problem. And we're hoping that maybe you folks might be able to help us. So God asked Jesus to do this great big job. God wanted Jesus to help him go around telling people about God. Jesus knew that it was going to be a great big huge job and he was not going to be able to do it by himself. So Jesus went for a walk down by the edge of the sea and as he walked down there he saw some friends of his and he said to his friends, I need your help. Will you please come with me? I am going to show you how to fish for people. Now, the question that Barry and I have, which we really need help with, we don't know how to fish for people. <laughs> so, we brought a fishing rod. So, see? So, when you go fishing for people, do you use a fishing rod with a, with a hook? And do you go and do you hook people and say, come with me, I have a job for you? And that's not how you do it? Oh gosh. So I can't use, I can't go out there with my fishing rod and grab somebody and say, come and help me with my work. No. You can't do that. Okay. Or what about a net? Can we fish for people with a net? Oh no! Oh no! Oh dear, look what happened now! I saw a So we can go and put the net around people and say to the people, come and help us? No. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what? Melissa, as you all know, has left some things down in the classroom, maybe that's gonna help us figure out how Jesus wanted us to fish for people. He didn't want us to use a fishing rod, and he didn't want us to use a fishing net. So we better go and find out exactly what the heck is going on here, what do you think? Should we do that? Yeah. Okay, come on then. We're going to go.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy I imply holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and a peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And a prayer, <clears throat> a prayer for the election of a bishop printed in your leaflet. We pray together. Almighty God, giver of all good gifts, grant your blessing on the clergy and laity who will assemble for the election of a bishop. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding that a chief pastor may be chosen, who shall minister before you to the glory of your name the good government of the territory committed to their charge, and the welfare of the Holy Church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We listen now for the Word of God. A reading from the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Hear what the Spirit says to you and I. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The proper psalm for today is part of Psalm 27, found on page 735 in the Green Book of Alternative Services. We'll read this responsively by the half verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? We skip down to verse 5. One thing have I asked of the Lord. One thing I seek. 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation which sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I see. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God, my salvation. First Corinthians 1, verse 10 to 18. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been, been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to all people. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is number 137 in More Voices. Welcome, Jesus, you are welcome. And so, as usual, we sing, um, we'll sing the first three verses uh, before the gospel and then the final verse after the gospel.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you are our beginning and our end. We come from you and we are going to you. You are our home and we are your home. Be with us now as we remember Jesus together. Open our hearts and minds to understand what you are inviting us to be and do, day by day. Amen. Amen. We're still in epiphany season, with images of light coming into and transforming the darkness, and the story of Jesus calling his first disciples. Barry Baskin at Soul Friends on Thursday shared the question a child asked, where does the darkness go when you turn on the light? That's a great question. <laughs> does the darkness dissolve or become part of the light? So I said to him, it's like what happens when love comes in. Everything changes. We see differently. We feel differently. We act differently. Here's another question to ponder. 
what happens in our life when we become Jesus' disciple. What happens when we open our heart and mind and let him in? Everything changes. We see differently. We act differently. We feel differently. We each have stories to tell about how Jesus showed up in our lives. Or we wouldn't be here this morning, would we? I think the most important question I ever asked Jesus in prayer was this. What does it mean for me to be your disciple today? Here. I remember it clearly because right after I prayed that, everything changed. A light was turned on. In this morning's gospel, it was the very first word that caught my attention. Now. Now. The present moment. The word now pops up a lot in scripture often occurring at pivotal moments. Many people think of the Bible as beginning with creation, the Bible story. They think of the story beginning with creation. And what we call the fall, the story of Adam and Eve, and how brokenness came into the goodness of creation. Those great mythic stories are placed at the beginning of the first book of the Bible as the prehistory, the prequel, as we would say today. But it is in the 12th chapter of Genesis that the story of how the light gets in begins. The story of faith that begins with Abraham. This is the key moment when Everything changes, and it begins with the word now. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. The first book of the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, like the book of Genesis, begins with a prequel. Three stories. Jesus' birth, Jesus leaving Galilee to go to the Jordan to be baptized by John, and then Jesus being led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he is tempted by the devil. Then the story of Jesus' public ministry begins with that word, now. And everything changes. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left that area where John had been gathering crowds of people that was closer to Jerusalem and the powers that be, and he returned to the outskirts, to Galilee. He left his own village of Nazareth and now made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the very territory that it had been prophesied by Isaiah that the light would come into the darkness. A New Testament scholar named Martin Debelius describes it this way. Between the year 27 and the year 34, there took place in the politically insignificant land of Palestine and unnoticed by the political and spiritual leaders of the day, events that set the world 
moving in an entirely different direction. Jesus identified what was happening this way. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. What does this mean? The Lord's Prayer, which Jesus taught us, links together, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We also use the words, the reign of God, which mean the same thing. But the language of kingdom and reign is the language of monarchs. And it's difficult to connect with our day-to-day lives, which are ruled by multinational corporations and the internet. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. God's kingdom comes, God's will is done, when God's nature or character is embodied and lived out in human lives. The Book of Common Prayer describes God's will beautifully when it says that God's property is always to have mercy, which is to say, that God's nature, the divine DNA, is loving kindness, always. Everything changes when we are connected with that loving kindness. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. There's much unpacking to be done with the word repent. The Greek word is metanoia, and literally it means to turn around, to turn to the light like a sunflower. The First Nations version of the New Testament, titled Walking the Good Road, puts it this way. God's good road from above is close. It is time to change your thinking and begin your great journey. The kingdom of God, the good road, is here now. Turn towards it. Turn your thoughts, turn your actions toward it. It's like an alarm, a little, hey, something just went off. It's like an alarm or a message notification sounding on your device, calling us to pay attention and respond now. The kingdom of God is not just words or ideas. In today's gospel, we see that the words are accompanied by Jesus' action that embodies what he has spoken. Jesus invites four ordinary fishermen to come with him. So here we have two sets of brothers job shadowing Jesus. They became the starter kit for a new pattern of being human. The good road is about transforming relationships. Fishing for people was about treating them in a new way, the way we would want to be treated ourselves, the way of loving kindness. What happens when instead of going along, not thinking about much, you know, our thoughts wandering. We send ourselves a mental notification to be alert and present. 
and to consciously turn our thoughts to loving kindness now, to treating others the way we would want to be treated. Other drivers, other people in the grocery lineups, people on the sidewalk, you name it. <clears throat> Wherever we are, whoever we're with, whatever we're doing, get catching our own attention and turning our attention to living God's loving kindness. On Thursday at Soul Friends, we began discussing an article David Lidster wrote. It began with this description. Love is not an emotion, a feeling, although it is often accompanied with very favorable feelings. It is a gutsy commitment to choosing to be kind, compassionate, and merciful. It will at times challenge every ounce of determination and courage within you. Love requires courage, perseverance, and self-discipline. The journey to love is a journey to the fullness of life found in the glory of God. I think this is an excellent description of what it means to be Jesus' disciple today and what it means to pray your kingdom come, your will be done. This week is the week of prayer for Christian unity. The theme of the Bible studies, prayers and worship that different denominations are invited to engage in together is do good, seek justice. That reminds me of my, one of my most favorite verses in the Bible, which is uh, towards the end of the Old Testament in the book of the prophet Micah, chapter six, verse eight, one of the few verses I can actually uh, text or you know, do that, six, eight. Anyway, and it says, what does the Lord require of you, O mortal, but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. This week, we also remembered Martin Luther King Day, or we remembered Martin Luther King. It was his day this week. And on the wall in our study at home, Gordon and I have a large framed black and white photo dated Selma, March 2nd, 1965, of Martin Luther King walking arm in arm with diverse faith leaders, walking united for racial justice, for the vision of what Martin Luther King called the beloved community. This was his way of referring to the kingdom of God, God's will, the good road, the beloved community. The beloved community started by Jesus and four fishermen, Andrew and Peter and James and John, and it grew. Beloved community is created and nurtured when we are consciously choosing loving kindness and justice in order to create a home where all people and all creatures can flourish. We are learning more all the time when the light turns on and we see more clearly about how to create such a community where all are interrelated. Interrelated goes beyond just being included as newcomers or add-ons or tokens sometimes. Interrelated means being respected, given voice, and honored for the gifts we each are and bring. This is what it's like to be in the circle 
where we each are equidistant from the center, where no one is more important or valuable than anyone else, and where each person can share and be listened to. Choosing to create beloved community means being willing to change how we do things. Nowadays, we call this process decolonizing. We are growing in awareness of where our ways of doing things have come from. And we are realizing that we can choose different ways that help build beloved community rather than perpetuate the former institutional culture and procedures. To do this takes presence of mind in the now. It takes praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and being alert to the opportunities before us. It takes persevering in choosing to take the steps to do things differently. In love, to ensure that all are in the circle and interrelated. Hmm. Happily, we can see lots of examples of starter kits for growing beloved community right here at St. Paul's and elsewhere in the territory of the people. We identified and celebrated many of those yesterday at our gathering, which was wonderful. And we looked at how we might improve as we move forward. What we learn of beloved community here at St. Paul's we can look for opportunities to grow in other areas of our life and find ways to gather a starter kit of like-minded, loving people. And what we learn of beloved community in other parts of our life, we can look for opportunities to grow here and find ways to gather a starter kit of like-minded, loving people here. I have an old copy, a hard copy. You know, it's not on my computer. It's just a photocopy that I've held on to. And it has circulated in this local Kamloops Anglican part of the beloved community for many years now. I think I got it from Betty Gore when I was the priest at Church of Cleopas in Westside back in the late 80s. It's titled Prayer for a Parish Meeting. It concludes by everyone praying together these words. It is our hope that the true business of this meeting will be our spiritual transformation and the transformation of others through us, and not simply the accomplishment of tasks and projects. We ask this of you now as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where does the darkness go when you turn on the light? What happens in our life together? when we are practicing being Jesus' disciples now? What begins to change when we consciously choose loving kindness? How is the good road being illuminated and the great journey opening up before us? The story of how the light gets in isn't over and we are each and all of us a part of it. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 188 in the Green Book of Alternative Services. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please feel free to either sit, stand, or kneel for the prayers of the people. The response today to let us pray will be, God of hope, hear our prayer. Let us pray, God, God of hope, hope hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the privilege of coming before you, our Creator, in prayer. Quiet in our minds that we can simply be mindful of your presence with us. Open our hearts that we can know the great love that you have for each of us. Let us pray. God of hope, Hear our prayer. We heard in the gospel today how Jesus called the disciples from their activities and lives to follow him, and how they so willingly and without hesitation left to follow Jesus. Help us to also trust Jesus so that we too can let go of those things that prevent us from drawing closer to him. Let us pray. God of hope, hear our prayer. We pray for peace and the well-being of all peoples. Holy One, we start by praying for peace in every heart. We pray for reconciliation between warring factions throughout the world, and especially for relief to all the peoples that are caught in these conflicts. And we do especially pray at this time for the peoples of the Ukraine, Iran, Yemen, Ethiopia, and East Africa, the Horn, the Congo, Burkina Faso, 
Mali, and Haiti, amongst other places. We pray for all the leaders of the nations that justice and peace may be foremost in their motivations to help these areas. We pray that in time, a lasting peace might prevail and the earth might be filled with the knowledge of your love. Let us pray. God of hope, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison, those in any need or trouble, those whose names have been placed in the prayer bowl that is on the altar today, and for those that are on your heart at this time. And we'll just pause for a moment. Gracious God, we ask you to comfort and support all who suffer. Guide us to do our part as we are able to reach out to them for the sake of him who suffered for us, Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Let us pray. God of hope, hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for the mission of the Church. Lord God, you have made all races and nations to be one family, and you sent Jesus to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Pour out your spirit on the whole creation and bring the nations of the world into your fellowship that we might be one. And in particular, in our prayers today, we pray for those in Anglican ministry, both locally and globally, for Linda Nichols, Lynn McNaughton, Jane Alexander, our Dean and, and uh, Rector Kyle. For Gordon Light, Barbara Liotskis, Bob Purdy, Sandra Sugden, Len Fraser, and Dan Hines. And we pray also for all lay leaders, for each of those and for all who support them. In the territory of the people, we pray for the people of St. Michael and all angels, Prince George, in their search for a new ministry team leader. Uh, The Reverend Patrick Sibley, his spouse, Barry, the Reverend Louise Peters, her spouse, Bruce, and their families. We pray for new vocations in leadership in the church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, We pray today for the Church of North India, united. In our sister diocese of Montreal, we pray for St. Luke, Hemingford, Trinity in Havelock, and St. Simeon's in La Chute. Also for their lay leaders and for the Reverend Nick Brotherwood. And in our St. Paul's prayer cycle, We pray today for Shirley Boxer, David Rittenberg, Joyce Donahue, Joan and Lou Lukau, and Jim Britton. And we pray also today for the Cathedral Committee. And we do give thanks today for the life of George Wilmot, for which the uh, flowers on the altar are given in loving memory by his wife, Linda Jackson. Let us pray. God of hope, hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for those who have died. We especially remember J. 
Jennifer Alley Britton, whose funeral is tomorrow, as has been announced. O God, the giver of eternal life, grant to all who have died and to us the hope of the resurrection and the fullness of joy in the fellowship of your saints. Let us pray. God of hope, hear our prayer. Finally, let us give thanks to God for his overwhelming grace and love. O Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us, for the beauty of this world, the wonder of life, the mystery of love, and the promise of our future. We give you thanks for the blessings of family and friends, for the loving care that surrounds us. Above all, we thank you for Jesus, your Son, and the gift of your Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known. We praise and thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
loving God, before the world began, you called us. Make holy all we offer you this day and strengthen us in that calling. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our great Thanksgiving prayer is um, Eucharistic prayer number five on page 204. And there's a wonderful refrain, so I hope you'll belt it out. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you. By your power you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever and ever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves. But we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. We give you thanks and praise, loving Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory, Glory to you forever and ever. ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Lord, to you forever and ever. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread, and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory, Glory to you forever, forever and ever. Loving God, you call us to be your servants. 
Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, almighty creator, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. set of sentences on page 212. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. This is Jesus' table and the kingdom of heaven is near and all are invited. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our hands have taken holy things. Our lives have been nourished by the body of your Son. May we who have eaten at this holy table be strengthened for service in your world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And our doxology on page 214. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. in the Blue Book of Common Praise.
Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and keep our attention focused on God's kingdom, the beloved community. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks to you, God. Hallelujah.